As the wise Ed Sheeran once said, bad habits lead to late nights ending alone. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm going back to what I used to do probably a year ago at this point, but I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog and I have the perfect book here today. We're gonna take a little break from fiction. We're going to enter the genre of self-help. I don't know, would you call this self-help? I kind of feel like this book is a little self-helpy. And today we're going to read Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now this book has kind of been blowing up. It blew up a few months ago, but I'm definitely late to the truth train but i thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to read this book because i am ushering a new alex in to this new year upcoming i'm starting a full-time job i just graduated college i feel like everything is in its place and i could benefit from using from having some good habits from having some good advice and so this book is called atomic habits and it's tiny changes remarkable results an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones so apparently i've heard so many things from friends about this book or just online is like one of the best self-help books or one of the books that really get you to get your life together i don't know that's all speculation it's very subjective i myself am personally not a huge fan of like self-help books or just like non-fiction books in general i don't really read a lot of memoirs i don't really read a lot of books like this only because i don't really believe don't kill me but i don't believe that they'll actually help me and that is just because i don't like getting advice from people i'm someone who is so resistant to change and i love my routine i am an old fart when it comes to my routine and my habits i usually just get a lot of anxiety whenever i go to a new place and enter a new transition in my life which is honestly really bad just because i haven't been really open-minded to change which is why i get really anxious and and why I get honestly very just like I feel very closed off and isolated when I go through changes because I feel like I don't have the tools in order to deal with them and in order to kind of process them so today we're throwing that all out the window we are going to read this book and see if it changes my life and in general I'm not thinking that this book is gonna like give me a whole 180 on like routine and my habits but there are definitely some habits that i am looking to break um some of my bad habits include leaving the dishes out sorry greta my roommate leaving the dishes out around the house leaving like stuff all over the house because i think i'm gonna deal with it later bringing my work for work back at home like late at night i love to do work late at night and not during the actual hours of my work um leaving the oven on after i use it and then like forgetting that it's on and then leaving the house and then having to like drive back all the way back just to turn it off there are just a bunch of bad habits that i could talk about in general not just like small things but also personality wise in terms of not being an open-minded person and being resistant to change so today's video as you might have guessed is going to be me reading this book atomic habits and seeing if it definitely changes my life and again i'm very pessimistic about this i'm not expecting anything big but based on the hype and what everyone's saying i'm expecting to at least learn something from this book if not changing my whole personhood then just learning a few tips of how to break my bad habits and create good habits in my life as i you know go through this new life transition of becoming an adult so yeah we're gonna put this book to the test i'm going to read it and vlog my experience and i hope if you read this book let me know down below how it affected you um again i'm super excited i feel like these books i never like take advice from them but when i read them i'm always like oh my god that's so valid like that's me like reading a sentence about me in a book is just very validating and i feel like it just makes me feel very seen so i feel like this book will mostly do that if anything um but yeah let's get into reading it this is definitely going to be over the course of a few days because i don't think I'm gonna read this book in one day but yeah let's go so it's the next day and i spent some time reading honestly didn't really get that far i'm only on page like 30 32 but i really have learned a lot i really like the use of so many examples i feel like i've never really read a book a self-help book like this that uses so many anecdotal examples i feel like every chapter is basically started with like an example of like history or a successful person and um the author really takes the time to like describe what this person did and then like announces their name or talks about who they are because you don't really realize what work went because like it's trying to like 
take us out of our like associations with people because I feel like a lot of what's in the media of what we know about like really big moguls or like successful people is that success comes overnight so I really love that separation of like the identity um but anyways speaking of identity this book really brought up a great point that I had never thought of before specifically this line the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation is when a habit becomes a part of your identity And that's just something I like never considered before. Like I've never really thought of that as a way to like intrinsically motivate myself because when it comes to intrinsic motivation and habits, there is a lack of it. I cannot find any motivations to instill new habits in my life. And I think this is such a really great technique to do that. So basically this book talks about how we have a lot of pride in our identity. So when we make habits a part of our identity, when we label it that way, it's a frame, it's a form of reframing and reshaping your ideas of habits in order to make them stick. So I actually was able to implement some of this last night. As soon as I read it, I was like, okay, we're just going to get started because I feel like this could be a really great opportunity. So last night I decided that there are two habits that I really want to tackle. The first one is taking stuff off my bed and not just throwing shit on my bed when I'm like whenever I discard something or whenever I need to put something away I just throw it on my bed to deal with it at night and then before I sleep there's just a bunch of stuff on my bed that I have to clean up and it's just like 10 minutes of me putting things back where they are when I could have just done it and put it in its original place like when I needed to get rid of it and not just throw it on my bed. Anyway, that's something that I wanted to tackle. And then another thing that I wanted to start doing this year was running. And running was something I used to do a lot. I used to be like on the track team for like one day. (laughs) But anyways, I do enjoy running. I love the idea of being active. I'm always an active person and I just want to become a runner. So here's what I did. I reframed it and I, instead of saying I want to take my stuff off the bed and not just throw it around, I basically like kind of reformed it and reshaped it to a part of my identity and I told myself that I want to be organized and then as for the running instead of saying I want to run three miles every day or I want to wake up in the morning and do morning run I told myself that I am a runner and I am truly you know I'm someone who loves to be active and I am a runner and that basically reframed my way of thinking about things and is kind of a motivator in of itself because I want to be able to say these things so saying it to my really now feels very true and I think this is a great point this book brings up a great point of how goals are very abstract and sometimes just don't really do anything for us goals are great to have but in reality they don't really get us push us past the point of actually doing stuff but instead making things a part of your identity again we're so prideful of our identity and we take great care in shaping our identity and what people think about us so this is just a great intrinsic motivator and I'm excited to see this journey Um, but as of now I definitely have new parts of my identity that I am proud of like being an organized person that's just something that is in itself a goal but it's also like me manifesting that it just feels so good and then being a runner as long as if you run you are a runner like it's just like when people say like if you write even if you're not published like you are a writer so identity is huge and this book has taught me that and I'm excited to explore this and possibly read a little bit more Hello everyone, today we are in the kitchen because we're going to try something out that I've been reading in the book. So this chapter talks about designing our environment and making cues for your preferred habits more obvious. This again has to do with some of the things that I talked about in the previous clips, um, making our habits more obvious or making cues more obvious. And this is essentially um, redesigning your environment in order to make the cues that trigger your habits more obvious so that you'll be reminded to do that. So for example, if you want to remember to take your medication each night, put your pill bottle directly next to the faucet on the bathroom counter. If you want to practice guitar more frequently, place your guitar stand in the middle of the living room. This is something I've already kind of been working on um, with my yoga mat and with my running clothes, putting it in an obvious place so that it will cue my brain into doing the habit and performing it. But today we're going to tackle my fridge. 
So a really bad habit that I want to break this year is wasting food. I produce a lot of food waste, mostly because I, when I go to the grocery store, I find that I'm hungry, so I end up buying a lot more that I don't need and I think I need in the moment. And I forget that some of my produce and groceries are in my fridge because I they are placed in like very different places. I have a roommate, so I do share the fridge with her. And our food is kind of just like thrown all over the place. There's no like rhythm or rhyme and also a lot of it is hidden because it's in drawers or it's in the back and I forget that something you know existed so today I want to tackle the fridge and kind of reorganize it in a way that kind of puts my produce at the front or look through my fridge and make sure that the things that are going to expire sooner um, make its way to the front of the fridge. I already did that by kind of putting out my um, vegetables that I kept in like my bin in this drawer right here. I took my avocados out and my potato out and I put it on my counter so every morning I would wake up and see it because I have to eat those right away before they rot. But today we're going to tackle the fridge and then we're going to look at some other ways I can redesign my environment in order to make Make things more obvious. Oh my god, this is exactly what I mean. I just went through my fridge and did an inventory of some things that are expiring soon or things that are going to go bad so that I can put them at, in the front of the fridge. And look what I just found in my fridge. This is a whole bottle of kombucha. I drink kombucha a lot, but I bought this, I think, before I went home for the summer. And it's like expired now, but I literally could have drank this, but I forgot about it. So it's expired now and I can't really drink it. But it's just a waste and I'm so sad because I like want to drink kombucha right now and I can't drink this one, so. I think if anything, this process is really teaching me patience, something that is a virtue that I just do not have. And I don't think I thought about how much before, how much work really goes in to people and to results. Because when you see like a famous person or when you see like an inventor or you know, someone out there, you see it on the news, you see it on media about their successes, you don't really think about or at least I don't really think about the work that went into this person's lives and what they did to get the result they needed. And that's something that this book is really making me think about because it's referencing all these anecdotes about these successful people who have started su successful careers or who have invented something really extraordinary, but you don't realize that it was an 11 year process or it was a 20 year process or like even a year long process. Like I, for some reason going into this video, thought that I would, be, I would be able to read this book and then right after reading this book I would have the key to success on how to break bad habits but I think the most important thing that's teaching me because it's a constant reminder every time I read a sentence it's always like patience 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 and I'm like I do not have patience but it's slowly teaching me that you know reading this book is a slow process you're not really supposed to read the book I think in one sitting I think you're supposed to like devour it slowly and kind of put things into practice and you know make honestly this book is like a habit like making some of the things in this book a habit that's like literally what it is um so yeah just a very interesting process and some things i've been thinking about especially as i'm trying to change a lot of things in my life and i'm constantly getting frustrated because things aren't sticking as much as i want them to but i have to realize that nothing works in one day and i have to give it a little bit of time all right, speaking of things I really didn't need to buy, but I have a habit of online shopping is this order that I just ordered from Parade that just came in the mail. If you didn't know, Parade is a like intimates, like loungewear, comfortable basics thing. I don't know how to call it, but like they're sustainable and I've always wanted to order from them and I'm super happy that I did. I actually am pretty proud of myself. Okay, yes, I do have a bad habit of just buying things when shopping online, but I have been considering buying things from Parade for so long just because I think it's more sustainable and I mean better than like, I don't know, like Victoria's Secret or some shit. Um, like, cause I don't know where else to get like 
you know the undies but i'm actually pretty proud of myself i did instill one of the habits that i learned from atomic habits which was like adding things to your cart and then letting it sit for like a day or two and if you still really want it and you still think you need it two days after then you should go ahead and buy it if you really think that's good and i'm proud because i did that like me i did that the most impulsive shopper like i am known to like buy things and then cancel them right after i buy it but i'm really proud because now this like gratification feels so much better like it just feels so much better knowing that i like vetted this heavily before buying it and now that it's here i'm like getting that gratification of like oh my god something that i really really wanted is here in my hands and i got it so anyway that being said i just wanted to share that little happy moment of like trying this new way of doing things and it actually paying off like so much but anyway they gave me free stickers which is so cute i love free stuff and they also gave me a free i don't know what this is but it says surprise and i didn't order this but i basically ordered a uh, bodysuit just like a plain white bodysuit and then their new like meadow set um bra and like undies or whatever so that is really excited i'm so excited that i finally have this in my hands and again just so grateful for this book for kind of teaching me this new way because it was off it was really often that i would buy things and feel instant regret when they came and just like not that happy like i wouldn't wear it or i just wouldn't like like it would make me feel bad every time i wore it but like this is not making me feel bad this is making me so happy and this book is changing my damn life. hello everyone so i just got back from my morning run and i think i am really getting a hold of this and making it a habit so i implemented some of the strategies in this book i think as you read further into the book you realize better strategies i think in the beginning it's very much of a rundown but as you progress more in the book you have ways of like increasing like building a habit so i started out by using some of the basic steps that this book taught me but as I progress in the book it taught me how to stack these steps and kind of implement a habit better so I was really able to see the progress that I was making in my running habit or making a habit out of running so I wanted to share a little bit of that progress with you there are three things or there's actually four but I kind of simplified this um, ways to make a good habit stick and the three ways that this book suggests is number one make it obvious make it easy and make it satisfying so for me i really wanted to run every morning or every other morning because i do work out um, a few days of the week so i kind of wanted to alternate that so essentially i just wanted to make running going on morning runs a part of my habit and morning routine and to preface this i have never run before i've never really been much of a runner but i think currently with a lot of like health issues that i have right now cardio would be a great thing and especially since i got new running shoes which i used as kind of like a way to make me run which was a good idea actually because ever since i got those running shoes i kind of want to wear them more because i really want to make good use of them because they're they were quite expensive so anyway back to the thing so making it obvious i was able to make this habit obvious by placing my running clothes on my desk in the morning so straight away when i wake up i like to get dressed for the day and if i'm wearing y yoga pants and and a sports bra and it just motivates me to run it just makes me feel like i should be working out or being active in some way just because i don't normally just wear like leggings and a sports bra around the house i like to wear like comfy clothes like shorts and a flowy shirt so the second one was make it easy and this was also easy because putting on my clothes is something that i do every morning getting dressed is easy so i just get dressed and if again if i'm wearing active wear i feel ready to be active and i feel like there's no point in like wearing the active 
have to wear if I'm not being active. And another easy part of this routine is tying my shoes. So that's something that is super easy to do. Once I ha see my shoes and I put them on and tie them, then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. And then the last part of this is make it satisfying. And for me, this was really, really difficult because running in the morning, waking up early and running in the morning does not really seem very satisfying like when you first think of it. But the way I was able to make it satisfying was I created an exercise playlist on Spotify and I love listening to music like my idea of self-care and feeling relaxed and feeling motivated is listening to music so i thought if i made an exercise playlist one that really hypes me up and with songs that i really love i would be more excited to wake up and go on a run because i just wanted to listen to my music and kind of bop while i'm running and that's exactly what i did this morning i listened to my exercise playlist for the first time and it motivated the hell out of me and i was just singing along too even though I was like huffing and puffing and it was just really satisfying to be able to wake up and only listen to this playlist when I'm exercising um so yeah and then the last part of this is a part of making it satisfying but I'm also about to take a shower um and I'm about to do my whole morning routine and hair routine and I really like this idea of kind of switching my um this routine to the morning instead of the night because I only really took night night showers for the like for the rest of for the most of my life I never really took morning showers and I was never really a morning person but I think now I've really been enjoying this idea of getting ready early in the day like getting exercise out of the way like doing my morning routine and then like having my hair all fresh feeling so fresh and ready for the day it is 10 a.m right now and I just feel so amazing like i can't even describe to you how amazing i feel because i finished my workout um i was able to read a little bit because i like to cool down after and i'm about to take a shower and get started with the rest of my day another technique that i am employing in this which i actually didn't plan on employing until i got back and i was like hey i'm sweaty already so why not just like cool down by doing some yoga so yoga is also something i've been trying to make a habit it. last semester in my final semester of college I took a yoga class so I was required to do it every week and it became a habit where I was being forced to do it and the gratification was essentially learning all these ways to like stretch and to like meditate and whatever and that just became a part of my habit and I si sort of find myself doing it sometimes when I need to cool down which again is another crazy thing because I never really did yoga but I did a technique in this book I learned called habit stacking. So what I did was I stacked my habits. So I said, after I run, since I'm all sweaty anyway and I need to cool down, I should do yoga and I also left my yoga mat out um, last night so that I would be prepared so it would just be sitting here so I didn't have to roll it out um, and I could just do the yoga when I came back and was all sweaty and ready to cool down and I did do it I really enjoyed it it was a nice like I'm in my sunroom right now which gets like the best lighting and the best wind and it's just so calming and this morning seriously has been such a calming experience for me and I'm excited that this is now going to be part of my morning routine. I can't wait to keep you guys updated on it. This book seriously is is doing something. I'm not going to say it's like changing my life because I think that's very dramatic, but this book is definitely teaching me a lot of techniques that I kind of knew, but I like didn't know how to implement them if that makes sense because I think overall this book is pretty like self-explanatory. The techniques and concepts concepts in this book are very like practical and logical and like they make sense if you think about it but the techniques are things that you don't really think about to do or put together um, in order to like make them stronger if that makes any sense so that's what's been happening today and I am so excited for the rest of the day and I think we got a hold on this running habit that I'm trying to stick with so 
I'm excited. All right, so I was able to shower. I am ready to start my day. And I figured now that we have a hold on this habit of, or making a habit out of running every morning and keeping up with my health, I thought we would tackle another habit that I've been trying to implement, which is writing my manuscript. And basically, I have started a manuscript, I think last year, last fall. It's been actually a year now since I started my manuscript. And I am almost done. And I really want to finish my manuscript or at least just finish writing it and like a first draft of it. The really the thing that's keeping me from doing this is I have to write pages. So I'm not like, you know, ready for it to be published or anything. I just want to finish writing it. And I just have not been able to kind of sit down and do that. I find that I'm not the type of person to just sit down and write like 20 pages. I really, it really is like I just log on sometimes and write one page or two page. But what I'm finding is that that is just very inconsistent. I am a writer, but I just am very inconsistently writing. It is not a habit of mine to sit down every day and get thoughts out of my head. I do journal a lot and I would say that I journal more often than I write my manuscript but I do want that to change especially because I am applying to a grant in September which requires a full manuscript so I really want to have this done by September so I thought we would get a hold on this habit and start tackling it a little this month while I'm doing this whole like habit journey okay so the habits book I actually recently I'm actually almost done with the book but the chapter that we're on right now is talking about keeping a habit tracker um, just so you can see your habits and in order to keep track of your your habit streak um, and don't break the chain you need to make sure that your habit is visible and you need to keep track of you need to you need to find an, a visible visible and obvious way for you to track your habits um, while seeing it uh, physically so that is, is a reminder so I'm taking one of the tips from this book but I actually made a little jar that says pages written and every time I write one page I'm gonna put a scrap of paper in there um, and then I will be able to physically see how many pages I've written possibly by the end of August but also another cool thing about this is that every dollar will be donated to my savings account or I will just transfer a dollar I will like add it up at the end um, and transfer all of that money in order to in my savings account so that will actually encourage me to write more pages because I feel like this will do a good job of making sure I'm writing every day because I want to see the contents of this increase but it'll also be a surprise at the end to calculate how many pages I've actually written and then donate that money exactly from to my savings account because I have a really bad habit of like not putting money in my savings account and just spending it because I think if it's in my checkings it's easily accessible and I can just use it but that is not the case today we are doing two things we are crushing this habit of spending money or uh, not actually we're not talking about that we are making writing a habit i am a writer we are making habit a good habit out of writing every day and contributing to this manuscript that needs to be finished just manifesting that into the world right now um and yeah well, well i'm excited to see how this journey is i definitely think i'm gonna start by writing a few pages today if i can usually again i don't really write that much i can't really get that much out in one day um so little by little we will get there i will keep you updated Hello everyone, so I came back from my run and I immediately took a shower so my hair is all dried and I blew up my bangs and I took a morning shower and feel so refreshed and so good. But I did want to jump on here to talk about some of the unintended things a part of this process of creating new habits for myself because this is just something that I noticed is that I'm taking morning showers every time after I run, which is every other day because um, I run every other day and that is just an unintended consequence of making running a part of my habit is now I have this habit of taking showers in the morning because I really want to feel refreshed and I say this because I have never been a morning shower person I actually was very resistant to the idea but I think 
doing that now after running it makes me feel a lot better and it actually makes taking showers in the morning more rewarding than it actually did just getting up and waking up and taking showers now i feel like i have to because i'm running and getting all sweaty but anyway i just wanted to point that out because i thought that that was a part of this process that has left me feeling very open-minded and accepting i think i came into this process very much like what the book says that is you shouldn't do is like having a set of goals having a to-do list of habits that like I want to have but rather just exploring some of the habits I do have and trying to break bad habits there are some unintended consequences or not consequences but some unintended outcomes to this journey and I'm really enjoying that I feel like I'm turning into an overall more open-minded person through this journey as well because now I like the idea of morning showers but before I literally couldn't stand it so I just wanted to pop on here and mention that because I think it's a cool part of this process and one that I hope that you can explore if you try reading this book. Hello everyone, so today I'm ready to close out this progress video of reading Atomic Habits by James Clear and I'm pretty sure you're all here for the question that you've been dying to know since the beginning of this video, did Atomic Habits change my life? And I would definitely say no, it didn't change my life. I changed my life and this book was just a blueprint to help me get to the ideal life that I want. Now, I really want to perpetuate this idea that books and media alone are not responsible for the change that we want to see in our lives. I think that's a misconception that I definitely had going into this video as well because I had seen so many success stories of people reading this and then them implementing things in their lives that I assumed that if I just read this book and didn't do anything and if I just like vlogged me reading this book like a regular reading vlog, my life would change and I would somehow learn something and get the life that I want. But it wasn't until I actually like started implementing some of the things in my lives like physically um, and most of it was frustrating in the beginning but once I started doing that I really noticed that I was actually like taking the advice of this book and changing my life. So again that's to say that just by reading a book a self-help book or watching a master class on something without actually trying the thing isn't going to change your life it's actually reading the book and implementing some of the things you know all of this is trying and failing at the same time I think a lot of the things that I tried in this book I stuck with but then there were some other things that I was just like this is not for me so I just didn't do them but I definitely think having taken a very proactive stance towards reading this novel really helped me change my life and now I'm starting to see some really tiny results that have come from the tiny changes that I've made. So overall, I think this book definitely does a really great job at describing things in layman's terms. There was a lot of terminology and specific vocabulary that was being used, like the law of change or something like that, and habit stacking. And I think all of that is great. I love having words to describe behaviors and kind of like the vernacular in order to talk about some of the things that I do in my life. But overall, I didn't feel like I got too lost in it. I think that's one of the things when I read like self-help books or any like psych books is sometimes I get too lost in the terminology and too focused on them that I start treating my life as, as if it were like an experiment when in reality I just want to like Basically reading this book was like I just wanted to implement some good habits. I think I equally created good habits while smashing some of my bad habits and that was something in the beginning that I I was really keen on was you know getting rid of my bad habits but I actually think I formed a lot more habits than I did in breaking some bad ones. And this is all to say that I don't know how this progress would have been if I wasn't filming it. I definitely think that a huge motivator of this process of me actually actually getting my ass up and doing some of the things described in this book was because I was filming this video and I really wanted to show you guys how committed I was and what if th did this book actually teach me anything and I will say that if I wasn't filming it I don't know if I would have been as proactive but I definitely think that I learned something no matter what even if I don't see results right away or I don't you know get a new habit or get rid of my bad habits I definitely learned something no matter what so I do want to emphasize that point but yes this video did impact my experience in many ways I was you know vlogging it but I think even if you're not a youtuber or you don't you know put stuff out online if you're not a writer I would definitely recommend filming your process and just keeping that for yourself because I also like to do that you know on the regular I like to film myself doing things because it's just therapeutic or I get to keep memories of it and see how I progress 
I think the most important thing that I learned from this book, which honestly I never knew I was going to learn in my entire life, for the longest time I have been an impatient person and impatience is a trait that I never really actually thought of. It wasn't something that bothered me until it started affecting my relationships and affected my mental health and I started to see that my impatience led to being really impulsive and some of these impulsive tendencies would affect me negatively. So this book was really beneficial in teaching me that patience um, and I think most of that was because this book really emphasizes that tiny changes lead to remarkable results and this book from the get-go describes that you will not see your results in a day, maybe not even a week, maybe not even a year, maybe not even a decade, but those results will pay off no matter what. And I'm actually fortunate enough to have implemented some of these changes and I'm already starting to see some of the changes come out in my life. Like I think, for example, one of the changes was um, this habit when it comes to online shopping is I impulsively buy stuff and I would just cancel my order right away because I would feel so guilty. And one thing that I started implementing was this idea of waiting 24 hours in between purchasing something and between putting something in my cart and purchasing it. And this helped me, first of all, not spend a lot of unnecessary money on things that I didn't need but I felt like I wanted in the moment and it taught me that there are just better places to spend my money and you don't know when sometimes there will be like a rainy day or when you need that money that you actually need to use it and I also don't feel guilty about my purchases anymore when I do this and I filmed something, a clip, I forgot, I honestly I've been filming this for two weeks, but I filmed a clip and you guys saw this in action that when I bought something that I actually took the time to think about, I didn't feel guilty about it because I had taken the time to think about it and this was one of the best things that this book taught me was patience, not only in buying things, but I think with myself because in filming this video, I really didn't rush the process of filming myself doing it. I didn't have a deadline for this video i didn't say that i needed to finish filming this in a week i just kind of filmed myself and i was like i'm just gonna close this out when i feel like i'm ready to talk about this book so i just honestly i can't even believe it at this point because i thought that patience was like this it was like a hungry thing that was like a part of me that i was never able to shake no matter who i talked to no matter how many friends i lost from being an impatient person like I thought it was something I could never shake and this book was able to teach me that and tell me that I am not alone in being an impulsive, impatient person. So overall, I loved Atomic Habits as a lot of people have and much to my chagrin, this book actually helped me and it wasn't just a book that I kind of flipped through, it was one that I consumed very slowly and implemented in my own life and I am so happy to recommend you this book and definitely to try out some of these things because I am just having a buttload of fun right now trying to implement these habits and sticking with the habits that I've created like running every morning and writing a page every day and not impulsively shopping and feeling guilty about it and I am just so grateful. So yeah, that's all for this video. I'm excited to close it out. If you have any other self-help book recommendations that you think I would like to try, please leave them in the comments down below. This was just a fun experience. And now after graduating college, I'm just ready to work on myself and create the ideal life that I have been wanting as an adult. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next video. Bye.